Hey, it's Paddy Hirsch at Marketplace. Today I want to talk about the word fiduciary. The reason? Because it's, in, uh, it's at the heart of a number of court cases that we're seeing that have come up right now to do with investors and banks. And, uh, you know, investors are complaining that banks didn't behave as fiduciaries or didn't live up to their fiduciary duties. So this word fiduciary, big Wall Street term, being banged around a lot. But I can tell you that fiduciary isn't necessarily a Wall Street concept because Say, for example, you bought a, a new car. Okay, here's your new car. And uh, you felt that, you know, because you were a little bit flush, you didn't just want a car, but you decided that you wanted a driver to go with it too. All right? So you hire a driver. Here's your driver. His name is Clive. All right, there he is. Clive's an excellent driver. Here's his little hat, his driver's hat. Um, so you hire Clive to, to drive the car for you, but not just to drive the car for you, but to look after the car for you. Okay, so, car, so, um, so Clive makes sure that the, uh, the car is clean at all times, both inside and out. He makes sure that it runs properly. He makes sure that it's properly maintained. He makes sure that he, doesn't, he drives it carefully so he doesn't ding it up. Radio is at the right volume. He, he, he doesn't use it for his own purposes. He doesn't drive his grandmother around or use it as a taxi or use it as a delivery van. He drives that car and maintains that car with your interests at heart, entirely for you, okay? In that sense, Clive is a fiduciary, okay? He's got a, his fiduciary duty is to look after an asset for you without regard to his own needs and his own requirements. And that is what uh, um, asset managers are supposed to do. So when you get involved with an asset manager, whether it be a bank or an independent asset manager or a financial advisor or whatever it is, that person has a fiduciary duty to look after your interests. And just the same way that Clive looks after your car, if he was, a, uh, if he was a, um, a, 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 an asset manager, he'd be looking after your big bag of money, okay, and he'd be investing it in ways that benefit you. Okay, so he puts that bag of money into, I don't know, maybe some bonds or some stock and, you know, maybe some, uh, some you know, asset-backed securities. Okay, but when he does that, he always makes sure that they're safe. He makes sure that he knows all about them, so he knows what the pitfalls and the risks are, and uh, so that he invests them with your interests at heart, so they're not going to go south. And another thing is if, if you ring Clive up and you say, hey, Clive, you know, I'm thinking about buying some auction rate securities, then Clive can say, well, I've looked into those, and I can tell you that they are risky in this way, but you know, they're also good in this way, so you just need to be aware of what the risks are. That's what his fiduciary responsibility is, his, his fiduciary duty. Okay, so why are people so bent out of shape about this? Well, because a lot of people believe that in some transactions with banks recently, that fiduciary responsibility has been abused, okay, or has not been lived up to. So say, for example, um, you know, you have an investor, okay, who uh, decides to go to um, an asset manager, and, uh, and, and this actually happened. We had a number of institutional investors um, went to a bank and uh, said to the bank, okay, we want, to, uh, we want to invest in some safe stuff, you know, because we are pension funds or we're uh, non-profit institutions, we want some safe investments. So they give the big bag of money to the bank and the bank just uh, then puts it into, um, into stocks and puts them into bonds and then puts them into, oh yes, auction rate securities. And it says, these are all really safe investments. Auction rate securities are as good as cash. Of course, what happens is the auction rate security market, you know, goes, tanks out those investments turn out to be actually extremely risky. And the investors are really, really unhappy about this, okay? So they're now suing the bank. And the question is, of course, the bank's response is, well, you know, maybe we didn't, we didn't understand auction rate security. We didn't understand that, they could, that the market could collapse, that they might not be that safe. So there's a debate about whether or not it lived up to its fiduciary responsibility to do real due diligence on this stuff, appreciate and understand the risk, and transmit that to the investor. Another example is where you've had a bunch of investors that have gone to a, um, have gone to a bank, another bank, which is, uh, has, created a, um, has created an asset. It's created one of these um, CDOs. Okay, so the bank has, has created this thing, this CDO, and got a, get a big bag of money from these investors. And it's, uh, it's put it into its CDO, okay, this, into this CDO. And um, what has happened is that the bank at the same time has turned around and helped another investor bet against the CDO. Okay, so here we have this, this investor on the other side. Okay, so he's betting that the housing market's gonna go bad. These guys reckon that the housing market is gonna stay well, and the bank is kind of the intermediary. It's put together this CDO, and it's allowed this other guy to bet against it. Okay, so what happens is, when the housing market collapses, this guy does really well, makes lots and lots of money. These guys lose all of their money, okay? And then they're obviously very upset because they're arguing that the bank had a fiduciary responsibility to make them aware of the risks of investing in this fund. Okay, they say that the uh, the the um, 
the banks should have let them know about this other guy on the other side of the trade and the fact that they were you know, helping this guy out. So you can see that there are a bunch of uh, arguments about fiduciary duty. Another one is where you have an investor, you know, goes to a bank and says, hey, hey, Mr. Bank, what I want to do is I want to trade some stock. Okay, so the bank says, uh, okay, give us your money and uh, you, uh, we'll buy you some stock. So they, he gives the money to the bank and the bank goes out and finds a buyer. Here's another buyer who wants that money and in exchange is going to give them, you know, 400 shares of GE or whatever it may be. Now the bank would say, you know, in this case, we're just a mark. We're just making a market. You you want to you want to uh, buy or sell something, and will somebody will find somebody who wants to, uh, to to buy or sell it on the other side. So in order that we can fulfill the trade, do we have a fiduciary responsibility to tell you that we think uh, General Electric shares are going to go bad? We would argue no. But a lot of people are arguing, well, you know, this market making job. Actually, they do have a responsibility to tell an investor, actually, you know, we think that uh, this is a bad idea that what you're doing. In fact, we think it's so bad, we're going to be on the other side of the trade actually selling you the stock. So you can see that the, there are a bunch of arguments building up around this whole issue of fiduciary responsibility. Who is responsible for what? How much responsibility they t t does, a, does a counterparty have for telling you the risk of an investment? The danger is, of course, that you have somebody that you're dealing with that you think is a fiduciary, that you think is acting in your best interests, when in actual fact they're betting against you on the other side. In that case, the bank or the, uh, the counterparty may make out like a bandit when things go wrong and your bet goes wrong, leaves them very, very happy and very wealthy, leaves you, frankly, rather badly needing a drink.